Okay, in our video series of infectious medicine, in this video, we are going to talk about chicken pox, a very important topic. We are going to discuss the presentation and the management of chicken pox in detail. First of all, what is chicken pox? Chicken pox is an infection caused by varicella zoster virus. Varicella zoster virus is basically a type of human herpes virus. It is transmitted through droplets, through respiratory route, and it results in formation of vesicles. These vesicles erupt and there is crusting and scab formation and resolution. It is basically transmitted through airborne route. If someone asks you the most common route, it's the droplet, the airborne route is the most common one. Direct contact is less common. And there is transplacental transmission of varicella zoster virus from a mother to the infant while the mother is pregnant during birth. Infectivity, when is it infectious? If a person gets varicella zoster virus and two days before the appearance of rash, it is the most infectious period. Two days before the appearance of rash and after the appearance of rash up to five days or if the till the time all the lesions have fully crusted. Till that period patient is fully infectious. Patient is highly infectious two days before the appearance of rash and five days after the appearance of rash or till that time all the lesions have fully crusted. Coming to the presentation of chicken pox. The presentation of chicken pox occurs after an incubation period of two weeks. Patient got exposed to chicken pox, varicella zoster virus. There is usually a period of two weeks in which patient has no symptoms. After two weeks, patient starts to develop prodromal phase. In prodromal phase, patient has fever, malaise, severe body aches. Really, these viral infections are associated with severe body aches. And then after the prodromal phase, there is exanthem phase. In exanthem phase, what happens is that rash starts to appear on the trunk and it starts spreading towards the face, extremities, even within the scalp. And it also involves the oral mucosa, buccal cavity. It also involves the genital, the palms and soles. It almost involves every part of the body, even the oral mucosa. It starts to appear as a macule, a small red dot. Then it starts to get raised. It is slightly raised and it forms a papule. Then it forms a vesicle. This is a vesicle on an erythematous base. It is also described as dew drop on a rose petal. The base is red and erythematous and over that there is a drop, a vesicle. Dew drop on a rose petal appearance. After that, this vesicle erupts, there is crusting and a scab is formed. So there is eruption, crusting and scab formation. Till the time all the lesions have not fully crusted like this, the patient is infectious. After crusting of the lesions, the patient is non-infectious. There is severe pruritus associated with chickenpox and remember pruritus plays a very important role in the complications. Why? Because if pruritus is not treated properly, the children or the adults, they will try to scratch these lesions and when they try to scratch these lesions, the natural eruption does not take place and they erupt these uh, uh, lesions and these lesions, when they erupt prematurely, there is a risk of secondary bacterial infection. So there is severe pruritus and it must be treated. Coming to the diagnosis of chickenpox. Diagnosis of chickenpox is very obvious. It's a clinical diagnosis and it can be easily made by looking at the rash, especially the vesicular phase. It's a clinical diagnosis, no tests are needed. But those who are watching this video for academic purposes can remember the best initial test as Zank smear. In the exam, if they ask you about the best initial test, then choose Zank smear is the best initial test in which they take the sample from the vesicles and they stain it and they look it under the microscope and they see multinucleated giant cells, basically all the macrophages eating up the virus. That is called as cowdery bodies. This is a picture showing cowdery bodies. Confirmatory test in all viral infections is almost always PCR, just like COVID-19 you always do uh, PCR for viral infections to confirm them. So active infection, PCR is done to detect VZV DNA. These tests are not done in real life. It's a clinical diagnosis. But for exams, you can remember these. 
Coming to the treatment of chickenpox. In the treatment of chickenpox, we divided the patients into two categories. Basically, there is one category that contains the children and those children get self-resolving infection. They do not need any treatment. They all just, all they need is just a supportive care for pruritus and treatment of fever, nothing else. Then there comes a category of adult patients who get chickenpox in the adulthood or the patients who are immunocompromised. In those patients, antiviral therapy is considered. So supportive care is given for pruritus, tablet, cetrazine, and antihistamine drug can be given. Calamine lotion is very effective. Promaxine gel. So basically, tablet, cetrazine, and calamine lotion are commonly used. Finger nails must be clipped. Advise the patient to clip the finger nails and advise them not to uh, scratch the skin. Ask them to avoid sunlight because uh, since the skin is very prone and skin is having vesicles, there is increased chances of ultraviolet rays injury in chickenpox. Ask them to wear soft clothes and whenever they are taking bath, ask them to not to use any soaps or drying agent that makes the skin more dry and cause uh, more itching. If the patient is having fever, use paracetamol. Now coming to the antiviral therapy. In healthy children less than or equal to 12 years of age, these children get self-resolving infection. Many of you might have gone through chicken pox and at that point you have completely recovered from the chicken pox infection. It does not need any antiviral therapy. It's a self-resolving infection in children. It's a self-limiting infection. Antivirals are not needed. All you need is supportive care. Now coming to the second category, patients who are unvaccinated, adolescents, adults, greater than or equal to 13 years of age. These are the patients who are unvaccinated and they are adults. In adults, usually the chicken box infection is more severe, associated with more complications than in children. In children, it's a self-resolving, self-limiting infection, but in, in adults, there is usually more risk of complications. So antiviral therapy is considered in adults. In pregnant patients, in immunocompromised and patients taking aspirin. These are the patients who are at high risk of developing complications and uh, uh, especially the immunocompromised patient, patient taking aspirin, there is increased risk of severe fatal widespread uh, systemic infection of varicella zoster virus. So antiviral therapy is considered in these patients. Antiviral therapy should be started within 24 hours after the appearance of rash. The sooner the better, the more earlier you give the lesser complication, the lesser severity of infection. Children at high risk of complications. Now, as I said that normally children do not need any antiviral therapy. It's a self-limiting infection in the children less than or equal to 12 years of age. They, they recover fully without any antiviral therapy. But if the, if the child is at high risk of infection, if the patient is immunocompromised, if the patient is talking, uh, taking uh, aspirin therapy, in that case, you can give oral acyclovir 20 mg per kg per dose with a maximum of 800 mg dose. It is given four times daily for five days for children of 2 to 12 years of age. Oral velocyclovir can also be considered 20 mg per kg per dose with the maximum dose of 1000 mg three times daily for five days. Now if there is an adult, that adult is unvaccinated, in adults there is a high risk of complications. In adults, antiviral therapy is given, it is considered and it should be given within 24 hours of infection. Velocyclovir 1 gram 3 times a day. Oral acyclovir 800 mg 5 times a day. You can choose any one of these. Treatment is given for 5 to 7 days. Now coming to a severely immunocompromised patients, patients who are taking chronic steroid therapy, patients who are having transplant and they are on immunosuppressive therapy. Patients on immunosuppressive therapies are at high risk of disseminated varicella zoster virus infection, disseminated chickenpox, and that systemic infection is even fatal. In such patients, you need to give IV acyclovir. In previous patients, we gave oral antibiotics. In this patient, you have to give IV acyclovir, 10 mg per kg IV every 8 hourly using ideal body weight. How to calculate ideal body weight? I have talked about it in detail in my video on ventilator mechanics. The link of that video is in the description. You keep checking the renal function. Now remember, when you are giving IV acyclovir, acyclovir precipitates in the kidneys. It crystallizes in the kidneys and it causes acute kidney injury. So you must have an eye. You keep checking the renal function tests when you are giving IV acyclovir. Ask the patient to return to hospital if they develop 
cough, severe headache, confusion, cellulitis. Now remember, when this patient come to you with chicken pox, a patient, uh, a child came to you with chicken pox, an adult came to you with chicken pox, you treated it, you managed it, you sent them home, it was a common OPD case. You tell them that if they develop cough because pneumonia is a common complication of chicken pox, varicella zoster virus can cause secondary bacterial infection resulting in pneumonia. If they develop, if they get confusion, if the family is, uh, tell the family that if the patient gets confused, bring them back. If they develop severe headache, if they develop cellulitis due to secondary bacterial infection, in such conditions, ask them to return to the hospital. Coming to the complications of varicella zoster virus or chicken pox infection, a very common complication is bacterial super infection. They scratch the wounds, they don't let them erupt at the natural pace, therefore bacteria infects it and bacterial super infection takes place. Then after many many years, someone got infection of chicken pox in childhood and after many many years, all of a sudden they develop severe pain on the certain dermatome in their chest. Like this, they develop severe stabbing pain with vesicular rash on a certain dermatome that does not cross the midline. Remember, a certain dermatome is affected and that dermatome, on the dermatome there is severe pain and vesicular rash like this, but it does not cross the midline. That is reactivation of varicella zoster virus and the reactivation of varicella zoster virus presents as shingles. The initial infection of varicella zoster virus is chicken pox in which you get vesicular rash throughout the body. But that virus, even if you give antivirals, even if the body fully recovers from it, that virus stays dormant in the dorsal neural ganglions. It remains dormant in the nervous system, in the dorsal root ganglion, it remains dormant. And when it reactivates, whichever dorsal root ganglion it is lying, it affects that specific dermatome of skin. So there is a dermatomal distribution and it never crosses the midline. It is always present in a certain dermatome and there is severe stabbing pain. Severe stabbing pain with vesicular rash after many years. That is reactivation as shingles. VZV causes latent infection in the dorsal root ganglia and there is a complication that can appear after years. Pneumonia is a common complication of chicken pox. Fetal chicken pox or congenital varicella syndrome. Remember, as I said that there is transplacental transmission from mother to the infant. Uh, chicken pox can transmit from mother to the infant and that can cause congenital anomalies. That are there, Those congenital anomalies are congenital varicella syndrome in which there is limb atrophy, ocular problems, chorioretinitis, microphthalmus, small eyes, cortical atrophy, atrophy of the brain and seizures due to cortical atrophy. So this is called as congenital varicella syndrome and it is a very dangerous complication. So from mother to infant transplacental transmission of varicella zoster virus can cause congenital varicella syndrome. Now coming to the prevention of chicken pox virus. In prevention of chicken pox, primary immunization CDC recommends two doses of vaccine. First dose given at 12 to 15 months of age, second dose given at 4 to 6 years of age. Usually one dose is enough to provide lifelong immunity. If a person got infected with chicken pox once, that person has a lifelong immunity. If a person get, got vaccinated with even a single dose, that patient is usually having lifelong immunity until and unless they get severely immunocompromised. In severe immunocompromised state, the immunity is already down. In that case, in those exceptional cases, person can get reactivation and systemic uh, varicella infection. Otherwise, one-time infection gives lifelong immunity to the patient. MMR vaccine, measles, mumps, rubella vaccine is usually combined with a varicella zoster virus vaccine that is present as MMRV vaccine. Now coming to post exposure prophylaxis. Now remember, if a person did not have chicken pox in the childhood, if the patient never got chicken pox and that patient came in contact with the person who was suffering from chicken pox. In that case, that person is at high risk that that patient will develop chicken pox if that patient uh, got exposed to the respiratory droplets. In that case, active immunization can be done within 5 days following exposure. After that, it is not as effective. Active immunization with vaccine is done within 5 days following the exposure to chicken pox. 
it is done in healthy patients and passive immunization is not needed in healthy patients but it is only done in patients who are immunocompromised in pregnant ladies immunosuppressed patients infants within 10 days after exposure passive immunization is the immunoglobulin that is given against the virus you give the immunoglobulins and those immunoglobulins bind to the varicella zoster virus and neutralize it clear it away from the body so healthy patients are given active immunization immunocompromised patients are given active immunization with passive immunization with VZIG. Before going into the summary, please click on the subscribe button. In summary, we talked about what is chickenpox caused by varicella zoster virus, the route of transmission, infectivity, the clinical feature with prodrome and exanthem phase, the progression of symptoms, macule, papule, vesicle eruption, crusted papules, diagnosis, clinical diagnosis, best initial text, zinc smear, confirmatory PCR, supportive care, healthy children do not need antiviral therapy, Adults and immunocompromised need antiviral therapy. Children at high risk of complication get oral acyclovir antiviral therapy in adults. Immunocompromised gets IV acyclovir. Keep checking the renal function test. Ask the patient to return to hospital if they develop these symptoms. Complications of chickenpox, prevention of chickenpox and post-exposure prophylaxis. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on infectious medicine. The link of those videos is given in the description below. Thank you very much.